Welcome everybody. The college football season is approaching, which means it's time for some preseason content. I'm Joe with The Game House, and today we're going to go over some bets you can place before the 2023 college football season. All right, so the best place that I find value in betting on college football is mostly over, under, win totals. That's what this whole article is going to be about. We're going to go through it. Uh, you can do futures and try to pick the Heisman winner, but that's sometimes tough. You can go with award winners. That's that's tough. And it's even stats, uh, that's more of a niche thing. But we're going to go with just some some teams I think you could do better than what their over-under win total is. So Kansas Jayhawks, over six wins. You know, last year made a bowl game. That was great. They bring a lot of production back from that team. And they also have the opportunity to win games. Three non-conference games uh, over – excuse me, yeah, Missouri State, Illinois, and Nevada – in conference games, you have BYU, UCF, Oklahoma State, Oklahoma, Iowa State, Texas Tech, and Cincinnati, which they can they can win those games. I think those are the winnable ones. Um, I think six wins might be more of a uh, probability than, than maybe having eight or nine. But uh, at the end of the day, at the very least, I think this could be a push uh, with the six wins here. I think that they can be a good team, again, with Jalen Daniels, a quarterback. And even if he goes down, they have Jason Bean, who's, who's stepped in very well. All right, Miami Red Hawks, over six and a half wins. Chuck Martin's done a great job with this program since he started. They've been bowl eligible since 2018, besides the COVID short in 2020 seasons. 12 returning starters this year, but includes Brett Gabbert, uh, the starting quarterback who's been there for what seems like forever now. Uh, Non-conference, they play Miami, Florida in the Battle of Miami's. Uh, UMass, Cincinnati, Delaware State. The, the Red Hawks can win at least two of those games, if not three, if, if they really pick off Cincinnati on a bad day. Um, that means they need to win five conference games. They do play Toledo and Ohio, but they avoid some of the other top teams in the MAC. Uh, this is a team that I think could win seven games, uh, maybe eight, possibly nine if they get really lucky. So uh, that's why I think the value is there. I think at a minimum they win six, but I do like the chances of them going over six and a half wins. Kentucky Wildcats over seven wins. Now everything kind of went wrong last year for Kentucky, and they still got to seven wins. So uh, Will Levis was injured. Uh, the offensive line was very bad. They've addressed that. They got Devin Leary in the transfer portal to replace Will Levis, who now is pro, went pro. Uh, offensive line had plenty of transfers. They actually have not just good players, but a little bit of depth up front as well. Liam Cohen is returning to the offensive off, offensive coordinator spot after going back to the NFL. You remember in 2021, the offense was better with Will Levis at quarterback because Liam Cohen was the offensive coordinator. He should make things easier for Devin Leary. Non-conference schedule. They play Ball State, Eastern Kentucky, Akron, and Louisville. That's three, if not four, wins right there, uh, unless something goes horribly wrong. Conference play, they have winnable games. Vanderbilt, Florida, Missouri, Mississippi State, and South Carolina. Do they win all those? No. But if they already have four wins out of the conference, say they win four games in conference, four out of those five, you know, that's um, – that's going to be good enough for them. You know, if they win five, all five, that's great. But I think they can definitely get the job done here to at least get seven wins and get that push, but probably go over. Oklahoma Sooners under nine and a half wins. Now, Brent Venable's first year, they go six and seven, uh, was not really thinking that was going to be the case. Now the over-under goes all the way up to nine and a half. That doesn't make too much sense to me. I think they'll be better, but that's, that's a huge leap in wins. That's, you know, going from six wins to having to hit 10 to hit the over. Um, they play Arkansas State, SMU, and Tulane in the non-conference schedule. Tulane could be tricky. SMU could be tricky uh, overall, but Oklahoma should be able to beat both of those teams. And then the Big 12 schedule, tough games with Texas, Kansas, Oklahoma State, and TCU. Uh, if they don't win all but two of those, assuming they sweep the non-conference, they're done. That's that's the bet. So this is more of a, hey, I think Oklahoma will get better. I don't think their schedule is especially tough, but – to go from six to ten wins would be very, very big. I think they're probably more at eight or nine wins, which means the under is going to hit. All right, the Cincinnati Bearcats, under five and a half wins. Uh, they won nine games last season with Luke Fickle, but now they have just four returning starters. Everyone left the program, and Scott Satterfield's hit the transfer portal and has a couple returning guys who I think are good, but it's going to be tough to get over five and a half wins in a new conference and everything. So they play Eastern Kentucky, Pittsburgh, and Miami, Ohio non-conference. They could win two of those at the very least with Eastern Kentucky and Miami, Ohio. Pittsburgh will be a tough game. Uh, that's something a lot to figure out. And then they join the Big 12. I don't know where the easy wins are. I mean, West Virginia and them are two of the teams that are picked to finish last in the conference. So maybe you beat West Virginia, but who else do you beat? When do you beat them? I mean, it's just one of those things. If, if you win three Big 12 games and two of your non-conference games, you're still at the under. So we're going under with Cincinnati Bearcats. 
Arkansas Razorbacks over seven wins. They burned me last year, but I'm buying back in. I just can't stop. K.J. Jefferson was injured last year. They had injuries to their secondary. Uh, they still won six games in a bowl game. They have um, gotten a lot of transfers to help their nine returning starters, but they have Jefferson back healthy. They're going to run the ball with Rocket Sanders. I think they can hit the over on seven wins, and we're going to get two Y here. Western Carolina, Kent State, FY, FIU, and BYU in the non-conference. Uh, now, while they did struggle with BYU last year, I do think BYU is a little bit worse this year. A uh, new quarterback coming in and everything, so that should help. I think they can sweep the board of the non-conference slate. And then the SEC schedule SEC schedule is always tough, but you only have to get three wins to get the push. I think they can probably go three or four and, and be eight and four by the end of the year, pushing for that top 25 spot uh, and, and figuring things out there. UTSA is the last, the second last one on this list, I believe. Uh, yeah, so we have over seven and a half wins. They've had a couple good seasons in a row. 11 and three record last season. 15 starters returning. Jeff Trailer's back. A coach, uh, quarterback Frank Harris is back. Receiver Zachary Franklin is transferring out or has transferred out to Ole Miss. But their offense should be humming still at 36.8 points per game. Non-conference: Houston, Texas State, Army, and Tennessee. Very tough, but I think they can win two of those. And then they're joining the AAC, which is a new battle for them as they were in this USA before. Um, they, they'll have tough games against UAB and Tulane, but they dodge a lot of the other top teams in the conference, so I think over seven and a half wins is definitely possible for, possible for UTSA, uh, despite them joining a new conference. All right, Penn State over nine and a half wins. Uh, 11-2 last year. We're 13 returning starters from last season. They've hit the transfer portal to help with that, too. They have stars with Nick Singleton at running back, left tackle Olu Fashanu. They're going to need second-year quarterback Drew Allar to step up to really help them out. But there's a lot of, I would say, optim- optimism – or excuse me. <laughs> there's there's a lot of uh, – <laughs> there's a lot of hope that he could be very good uh, this year for them and even maybe better than optimism – more optimism that he could be better than – uh, Sean Clifford last year. Sorry, I'm fumbling over my, my words here. Uh, the defense ranked 10th in the country last year and has talent on every level of the defense. You know, pass rushers, secondary, doesn't matter. Uh, out of conference, they play West Virginia, Delaware, and UMass. Should be able to win all those. Tough part comes with the Big Ten. But last year, they handled everyone but Ohio State and, Michi- Ohio State and Michigan. Um, that's where it gets tricky here. I think they can go 10-2 and two again this year with two losses to Ohio State and Michigan. But I also think... They could beat one of those teams. So even if they slip up somewhere else, it could be 10 wins. I do think 10 wins is a reasonable goal for them. So I'm taking the over on that. There's a lot of faith going into Drew Alar being what he, you know recruiting ranking says he says he is. But at the end of the day, they're talented uh, on every level of both the offense and defense. I think they can get the job done. So we're going over with Penn State. Let me know what bets you think will hit this year. Let me know what over-unders you're looking at for this year for college football. Uh, let me know in the comments down below. For now, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.